Hello everyone, my name is Hannah. Welcome to a new reading vlog. So this reading vlog is going to be a weekend readathon reading vlog. So my friend Lachlan has a Patreon that is all witchy themed. So it's called The Cozy Coven and she is hosting her first Patreon only readathon this weekend. So I'm really excited to participate in this because I am in the mood for all things witchy. So it's going to be amazing and like the graphics that she has created are really cool. Yeah, I'm just really excited. So I'll leave Lachlan's Patreon linked down below if you want to join that. Not that I'm biased or anything, but I would highly, highly recommend it. It's amazing. But yeah, basically I wanted to film this intro because it is Thursday night and the readathon officially starts on Friday, but I work all day Friday, so I probably will get some audiobook listening done on Friday. So like by the time I do my like first check-in of the actual readathon, hopefully I'll be like pretty far into a book already. I have two books that I am like officially like putting on my TBR like that I'm trying to read this weekend and then some like hopefuls if I happen to read those two books. I haven't been reading as much as I have in the past so I feel like two books is like a good challenge for me but still like doable so I'm gonna stick with those two books and if I happen to read those and then I can pick up more then I will. But the first book that I want to pick up is called When the Crows Away by R. Lee Wallace. This is a cozy mystery witchy book. I read the first book in the Company of Witches, I think in my last reading vlog, and I really enjoyed it. And this is like the continuation of that series. I think the author has officially said that she's not going to write any more in the series. But it's about this witch who lives with her witchy aunts and they run this B&B. &B. And yeah, it's a cozy mystery and I really liked the witchy vibes of the first book. So I'm hoping the second book is just the same. And then the other book is called The Coven by Harper something, Harper something Woods, Harper L. Woods. I don't know. I'll pop the cover up. This is actually Lachlan's Patreon book club pick for this month as well. And it's a witchy book dark academia setting I think or school setting maybe it's like a dark romance witchy romance I don't know a ton about it other than like those couple things but I figured this was the perfect time to read it since it's for Lachlan's readathon it's Lachlan's book club so hopefully I end up enjoying that one as well because she just posted her like spoilery reading vlog for it today and I want to watch that so I got to read the book first but yeah she created a bingo board and everything so I'm gonna try to at least get one bingo maybe I'll try to go for two because some of the like bingo boxes aren't necessarily reading related I think one of them is to post my TBR to my Instagram using like one of her templates one of them is like um watching a witchy movie and one of them is like a cozy hobby and I have to get some crocheting done so I'm hoping that I can at least get one bingo that's the goal is to at least get one bingo but yeah I'm also going to be doing a lot of fall things in this reading vlog so it's gonna be like a like a cozy witchy reading vlog and I'm really excited about it Brandon and I are going to an apple orchard we're gonna pick some apples we're going to pick out some pumpkins and go to this like fall market and then I also want to set up my Halloween slash fall decorations in the house and I have a Halloween like spooky little village which is my pride and joy that and my Christmas village are like two things that bring me some of the most joy at the end of the year and I'm really excited to set them up because I have some new pieces to add to my collection so I can't wait to show you all. So yeah, I'm really excited for this reading vlog. I do have some things to unbox here. So I figured I would start off with a little unboxing. I'm gonna open this one first because I think that it's one of my books for this reading vlog. Yay, it is. It is When the Crow's Away. And again, this cover, the first cover is also like really witchy and cute. But the crow, his name is Dog. And I just love that. And then the cat's name is Faustus, which I really like as well. But yeah, it's, I think this might be set in springtime. It says, the ghost of a chocolatier believes he was murdered and it's up to young witch Bryn Warren to use her magical gifts and old-fashioned sleuthing skills to find out how he really met his bitter end in this enchanting new Even Fall Witches B&B &B mystery. So I did forget to mention the main character, Bryn. She's a witch and her magic is 
like that she's a witch of the dead so she can actually talk to ghosts and stuff which we didn't get to see a lot of in the first book so I think we're gonna get to see that in this one and I'm really excited for that and it's less than 300 pages so it should be a really quick read so I'm gonna start the audiobook for this tomorrow like right away on my way to work and I have tasks in the afternoon at work like I have to <laughs> I'm a FIA teacher if you didn't know and we have a like rock wall traverse wall so it doesn't go up it goes across but I have to hand screw in every single rock and it takes a really long time so I'm spending my whole afternoon prep doing that and I'm just gonna listen to the audiobook while I do that so hopefully in my next update I'm like over halfway through that I would love to finish that on the first day that would be so cool and I know Lachlan is doing reading sprints tomorrow too so I'll be joining those as well Okay, next um, package here. Oh, it's so pretty. So this is Somewhere Beyond the Sea by TJ Klune, and it has like the yellow sprayed edges. I don't really, I'm, I don't really care about the yellow sprayed edges because my other ones, none of them have sprayed edges. But I do really like that it has the house on the spine, like all my other ones. If you didn't know, this is the sequel to The House in the Cerulean Sea, which is one of my favorite books of all time. It's just like a warm hug of a book. It's just like the most wholesome kind of thing. Like it's a little bit cheesy at times, but like in the best possible way. It's about this orphanage for magical children who the world has like deemed monsters. And the main character, Linus, is a caseworker to like make sure that everything is up to code with them and that they're not like causing any mayhem or anything like that. And it's it's such a wholesome book. I love it so much. But this is the sequel and I want to reread the first book before going into this one. But this just recently came out. So I think we get some backstory on Arthur who is the like headmaster of this magical children orphanage. So I'm really excited to be back with these characters because I just love them so much. All right, and then the last box is a gift from my friend Mel who hand binds fanfics. So she sneakily sent me a little gift. So let's open that and see what we've got. Oh, she's so cute. Look at her. Oh my God, Mel. So she's got some Harry Potter stickers. This is the cutest little like note card thing. It says happy birthday. I hope you had a wonderful time on your birthday. Sorry for this being late. Thank you for talking Dramani with me, Melody. Um, Thank you for talking Dramani with me, Melody, and like keeping me motivated to keep reading fanfic and stuff. It's just so much fun to have made this friendship with Mel about fanfic because I just never knew. I never knew the world of fanfic was so incredible and I'm so excited about it. Look at this. She is, Mel is doing the most always, but look, she even made Dramini bookmarks. Look at that. I am speechless. I am already, these are literally the bookmarks. Okay, and how she cutely wrapped everything. Mel, stop it. Love this like ribbon too, it's really pretty. Okay, so there's two here. I'm gonna open the first one that says happy birthday on it. Oh my God, and I love this washi tape. Oh. It's apple pies and other amends, which is one of the first um, Germani fanfics I read. I read Manacled and Re Remain Nameless first, which are like my two all time favorites. I doubt anything will ever top those, but like, I love them but this one is like, like I said with House in the Cerulean Sea it's like a warm hug this one it's all about healing through baking and their relationship in this one is so so cute I'm so happy to have a physical copy of this thank you so much Mel oh, the back is cute too it says sometimes you're sad sometimes you need dessert and sometimes it's a little of both okay next one This one's Damaged Goods, which I haven't read yet, but we want to eventually buddy read this one. I think we were planning to buddy read it this year, but buddy reads got a little bit hectic for us. So we'll kind of like pick this up and then we'll do like a discussion whenever like me, her and Lachlan all pick it up. But I am really, really excited for this one. Oh, it's so pretty. Thank you so much, Mel. You're the best. 
All right, so yeah, that is my little unboxing for the day and my little book haul, which I haven't like had books to haul in such a long time because I haven't really been buying any books. I mean, I've bought a few, but still four in one sitting is a lot at the moment. So yeah, welcome to the reading vlog. Welcome to the Cozy Coven Readathon. I'm really excited to do all things cozy and Halloween-y and witchy this weekend. I'm hoping to watch The Craft this weekend, which is a like classic witchy horror movie. I think it's technically class classified as horror. I watched it for the first time last year and I really loved it. So I'm gonna watch that one this weekend as well as try to do like get the bingo boards and read my two books on my TBR. So that is it for this intro. Welcome to the vlog. I hope that you enjoy it. I hope it's as cozy as it's like in my head that it's going to turn out to be. I will check back in with you tomorrow once I have a reading update for When the Crow's Away. All right, hello. It is Friday now. After work, I have officially made it to the weekend and I'm ready. I'm ready for the Cozy Coven Readathon. I did start When the Crow's Away today, but I didn't get quite as far as I wanted to before I came home, but I made I made a good chunk into it. So I'm on page 107, which is about a third of the way through it. And it is set in spring, but if I ignore all of that, like the spring, the talk of spring and flowers and stuff, then I'm like into it because I don't, I don't care. I mean, I love spring. It's fun. It's a great season, but right now I'm all about fall. So I really wish that this one was still set in fall. I get that the last one was set in fall. So this one is like set several months later, but yeah, I'm just kind of ignoring the fact that it's set in spring. The mystery though is going to be really good because the main character, like I said, can like see and talk to ghosts. And so we're going to get a lot of that in this one. She's already seen and spoken to the ghost of the sweet shop owner and he is convinced that he was murdered and he wants her help to solve his murder and so she's on the case again and yeah all of the like witchy elements of it are still there still giving the small town vibes are great one of my favorite characters from the previous book Nixie is also in this one she's just like a side character but I really like her. I was happy to see that she was back in it but yeah so far I'm enjoying it just as much as the first apart from the like setting of it being spring instead of fall but that is easily ignored for me. The witchy aspect is making it feel like fall to me. That's where I'm at in this one. Lachlan is doing sprints right now so I need to go shower the day off of me and get into my pajamas and get cuddled up on the couch so that I can try to finish this tonight. The audiobook is not very long. I think I have maybe like two hours or two and a half hours left to finish the whole thing so I can definitely finish this tonight. My plan is to pop in the audiobook for this follow along maybe for a little bit and then I'm also going to crochet tonight because I have I have a few rows I need to catch up on for my genre blanket and one of the prompts on the bingo board is to do a cozy hobby and crocheting is definitely a cozy hobby so I'm going to be doing that. I pretty much just wanted to check in and give like my initial thoughts on When the Crow's Away so that may my next update when I'm like hey I finished this book I've at least given some sort of update on it. So I will see you all when I finish this book.
I used the stencil. Ah, okay. Slightly less impressed. It's clever though, right? We're a burger restaurant. It's advertising. My woods are clever. No, I'm gonna go put this outside. Normal. 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 What? Tina! Welcome to Jacko Land. Your Halloween just got a little Halloweener. Wow! Oh, it's so pretty! Spooky. Alright, hello everyone. I have some updates now. So it is currently Saturday afternoon. It's about three o'clock in the afternoon. I had a bit of a busy morning. Um, but last night I did finish When the Crow's Away and I thought this was like perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with it. I like the witchy vibes. I like the characters and the small town setting. The mystery was just kind of eh to me. Like I know that I'm going into this not expecting a ton from the mysteries but yeah it just felt a little bit lackluster to me like I preferred the mystery of the last one more to this one but yeah it was it was fine I think I'm gonna give this one three stars just because like yeah it's fine it's a fine book a three star book is just a fine book so I'm gonna leave it at that I do like the setting of even fall like the small town vibes I like the witchy aspect and the talking to ghosts aspect was really fun but yeah other than that I just felt like this book was lacking a little bit so I'm giving it three stars but that is the first book of the readathon down so I'm using that one to fulfill main character is a witch so on the bingo board I have posted my tbr to instagram I have the free space and then I have main character as a witch and I haven't done the switch it up prompt which is a cozy hobby but I was supposed to crochet last night and I just like couldn't be bothered to so I'm gonna go do that today um it is currently raining out which is perfect because it's been really warm this week so I'm excited that it's cloudy and rainy right now I'm going to go get into some really comfy clothes and cuddle up on the couch and start crocheting so I can cross off switch it up and then I'm also going to listen to the audio of The Coven by Harper L. Woods so this is a dark witchy romance I think it's set at a school 
I did start this. I'm only like two chapters in, not very far at all, but it seems kind of creepy, kind of spooky. Um, there is like a whole list of trigger warnings and content warnings though, which have me slightly skeptical if I'm gonna even enjoy this, but we shall see. I guess I don't know what page I'm really on. I just was listening to the audiobook while I was driving, so I don't really know what page I'm on, but I'm on chapter three now, so I've gotta be at least like, I don't know, 15, 20 pages in, not very far at all, but I'm going to continue to listen to that one while I crochet and cuddle up on the couch and listen to the rain. Lachlan is still doing reading sprints. I'm not sure if she's going to like do another sprint with the ambiance, but if she does, I'll be watching that. And then later tonight, I want to watch a witchy movie and I think that I'm gonna be able to watch it with Lachlan. We're gonna watch The Craft. So I'm excited to watch that one again because I really enjoyed it last time I watched it last year. And it's kind of like in line with The Coven with like a creepy, spooky, witchy time, like dark witchy instead of like, this one is more like cutesy witchy, you know? But if I can finish The Coven, I can cross off I think it's called dark atmospheric read or dark atmospheric romance or something like that. One of the, the whatever the bottom <laughs> bingo box is, I'll be able to cross that off and switch it up if I do my crocheting. So then I'll get a bingo, which was my goal for the weekend. I don't know if I'll be able to get another bingo in just based off of the books that I have to read and what the prompts are. I do think I'm going to pick up Fangs by Sarah Anderson, which is like this little comic about a vampire and a werewolf falling in love. And it's just like, it's not like necessarily a storyline. It's just kind of like slice of life, little moments of what that might look like. And it's a really, really cute and it's extremely fast to read. I can read this whole thing in probably about 15 minutes, to be honest. And I really love it. And I think one of the bingo prompts is like a spooky graphic novel or manga so I'm gonna count this because it's spooky-ish. Again I'm not sure what I will be able to like what other bingo I would be able to get but I'm gonna try to tick off as many boxes on the bingo board as I can this weekend. So for tonight I'm just going to continue reading The Coven and just get real cozy and watch a witchy movie with Lachlan and just have a good grand old time. So that's the plan. Let's go get to getting cozy.
Okay, I am about halfway through the coven and I'm kind of liking it, kind of not. I really don't like the romance. <laughs> Everything else I'm enjoying. The school, like the creepy witchy school setting. I like the main character and I like her magic because it's like nature magic. There's like a mystery surrounding, like there's like this murder happening and people are out to get the main character. I don't think I ever said what this was about. Um, it follows this, the main character Willow, who is a witch and she is the last descendant of one of the 13 like founding witch families and so she is kind of brought against her will to this school i can't remember what it's called hollow graves or something like that i don't remember um and all of these like founders of <laughs> this coven are like long dead centuries old but they're still there as like animated skeletons basically which is kind of like a cool aspect of it because it's literally like a skeleton teaching a class to these kids like not kids they're in their 20s but i don't know it just adds to like the creep factor of it all but yeah the romance is between willow and the headmaster who is like eons old like dawn of time old and he's like a demon from hell. He's called a vessel, which is kind of like a vampire because he has to drink witch blood in order to stay alive. And like as a character, he's fine. But anytime he talks about the main character, I'm like, ew, instantly ew. Like the romance is so instantaneous. They talk about like getting together and having sex like almost immediately upon meeting. Like, he's like, yeah, I'm going to sleep with her. I'm, I'm going to do that with that one. <laughs> and it's like, um, okay, where's the build up? <laughs> and it's like supposed to be like a forbidden romance because he's a vessel and she's a witch and they're supposed to hate each other. She's trying to get answers about this thing with like her aunt's bones because her aunt was like supposedly one of the last living descendants of the main witch Hecate. And that means that Willow is then actually one of the last descendants of the Hecate line and this other line that they know about, but they don't know that she's the last descendant of the Hecate line. And obviously someone was trying to kill her aunt. So she's like, gotta keep it a secret. She's trying to get answers out of the headmaster by like seducing him, but also she kind of is into him. But yeah, the romance, there's just no build up. They just are, there's it's constant flirting, constant like making out and stuff like that. And honestly, I don't care about the romance at all. You could totally pull that part out of it and I'd be like, okay, then I'm enjoying the book. <laughs> but yeah, everything else, the vibes of it, like the creepy school and the like witchy like her magic is cool and like everybody else doesn't use the old magic like she does i don't know i'm enjoying like the plot and the setting and i like the main character but the romance is like really sucking a lot of the enjoyment out of it for me but it's not bad i'm yeah i'm fine like i can just ignore the romance bits although it is annoying so that's that and I caught all the way up on my genre blanket. So I figured I would show you that. So it's getting like decently big. It's still nowhere near like blanket length. <laughs> and it's almost the end of September. So I definitely think this is going to be a two year genre blanket because I have not read as much as I have in years previous, which it's fine. But I am officially caught up i will have to add more rows once i finish the coven but like as of right now this is this is the blanket but yeah see it's like it's i'm making progress it's getting there it's like i don't know a third of the way the length i would want it to be so yeah i think a two-year genre blanket is in store for me but Anyways, I still haven't watched The Craft. Oh, I was waiting for Lachlan to reach out and she literally just texted and was like, let me know. 
So I'm going to go text her back. So I think I'm going to take a break from reading The Coven and watch The Craft with Lachlan. And then I will probably be too tired to continue reading for the night. I'll just go to bed. But I will continue this tomorrow. And I have high hopes that I can finish this tomorrow before the readathon ends. And then I'll be able to pick up Fangs as well. And I don't know if I'll be able to read anything else after that. I truly don't think that I'll be able to finish another book tomorrow, but I'm happy with the books that I did read for this readathon so far. And I also didn't decorate for like Halloween slash fall. Like I said, I was going to, I do still want to set up my village, but I think I'm just going to do that tomorrow as well. So I'm going to go watch the craft with Lachlan and yeah, I will see you all tomorrow for the final day of the readathon. Watch out for those weirdos. <laughs> we are the weirdos, mister. <laughs> All right, hello everyone. It is now Sunday. It's the 22nd of September, which means it is the fall equinox. It's the first day of autumn. So happy autumn to all of my autumnal girlies. It is also the last day of the Cozy Coven readathon. So I spent my day decorating for fall and setting up my spooky village, which I'm really excited about because I got a couple new pieces 
I got this one that's called the Halloween Party House, which is pretty cool. And then this like skeleton gazebo, which we love a gazebo in the middle of town, very Stars Hollow, but like the Halloween town version of it. And I got a couple other like little supplemental pieces apart from just like the houses that I already have and stuff like that. And my mom had the idea last year because my Christmas village was getting so big, it was taking up so much counter space because I had originally had it on my like kitchen counter peninsula thing. And she was like, why don't you move all of the china from your china hutch and put it on the hutch? And I was like, mm, that's a great idea. So that is what I did this year for my spooky village as well. So I really like it. And just looking at it just like makes me smile and makes me so happy. So I really like my spooky village. I also spent the day finishing The Coven by Harper L. Woods and Basically, the stuff that I was saying last night is still the same. Like, the plot is good. I liked the setting. I liked the magic. I didn't mind the writing. The thing that I really just didn't enjoy was the romance. I completely skipped, like, the smutty scenes or, like, skim read just in case there was any, like, random important reveals during that time. Which, like... I love spice in books like I am not opposed to it but I just couldn't get on board with this because it was so rushed I was just like don't care get back to the plot like I don't care <laughs> about this at all other than that though I did really enjoy it the ending was pretty explosive and I didn't see like the main twist coming which was good um and it ends on quite the cliffhanger so I might be picking up book two just to see what happens. Plus, I really liked the magic in this book. The main character has like a symbiotic relationship with nature. So she makes offerings and nature like gives her magic and helps her. And yeah, she's like very much like a naturalist, which, which I really enjoyed. Overall, not a bad book. <laughs> like I still found most parts of it to be enjoyable. It was just the romance. And I feel like if the romance was rewritten and redone to have like a little bit more of a slow burn build up, then I really could have loved this book. A little bit unfortunate that the romance was what it was. I think I'm gonna end up giving it like three or 3.5 stars somewhere in there. But yeah, I am intrigued to continue on to the next book. I think there's only two books in the series. So I do wanna kind of find out what happens. And I also read Fangs by Sarah Anderson. I just love this little comic so much. It's so cute and it just like makes me giggle. I love all the little like puns and like vampire werewolf like jokes that are made in here. If you haven't read this yet, now is the time to do it. It's like the perfect time of year to read about a vampire and a werewolf and their like funny little cute romance. And it's super quick. I literally read this in like 10 or 15 minutes. It's so fast. So for, sorry, for the coven, I did make a bingo because of this book, a dark atmospheric romance or an atmospheric dark romance, whatever that prompt was, I finished that prompt. And so I've got my bingo. I did come very close to getting, I think like two or three other bingos, but that is really my only official bingo. And then I was just trying to get other prompts. I have When the Crow is Away. This was Witch as a main character. I could have used the coven for Witch as a main character as well. It has an animal on the cover. It's got a crow and a black cat. Orange on the cover up in the corner here. I'm trying to think if there was any other ones that I used this one for. Oh, I'm using the coven for spooky cover because I don't know. There's like long skeletal hands on it. So it's kind of spooky. It's a school setting. And then Fangs is a reread. It's a spooky manga slash graphic novel. It's not like actually spooky, but I'm counting it because it's a vampire and a werewolf. So like spooky season graphic novel, comic, whatever you want to call it. And then the like non reading prompts. I posted my TBR to my Instagram. I did a cozy hobby for Switch It Up. I crocheted. I watched a witchy movie, watched The Craft with Lachlan. I did reading sprints with Lachlan. Oh, I baked cookies. So I like baked a sweet treat. I can't remember what that prompt was. I did bake cookies today though. Yeah, I can't remember all of the prompts, but I'll pop up the bingo board on the screen to show you my official finale of the bingo board. And I have proudly circled my 
only bingo on the whole board. Overall, reading three books, I mean like two novels and then one really quick little comic, um, I think is really good for a week on weekend readathon. I think overall I completed 15 of the prompts on the bingo board, so I'm also quite happy with that. So I'm gonna call this a smashing success. I had a very cozy autumnal weekend. It was a great way to celebrate the first day of autumn and just get cozy and read witchy things and get witchy and yeah, it was just a really fun weekend. So thank you Lachlan for hosting this readathon with your Patreon and creating all of the graphics and prompts for us to follow. I had an absolute blast. I can't wait to do this again. I will leave Lachlan's Patreon linked down below if you want to join. I do know that she plans to do more readathons in the future, so you definitely don't want to miss that. So make sure that you um, become a part of her Patreon because it's amazing and she's amazing. I'll also leave her channel linked down below if you want to go over and check out her videos and subscribe if you haven't already. Don't know why you wouldn't be, but maybe if you're new here, <laughs> if you haven't checked out Lachlan's channel, go over and do that right away because her content is amazing. And if you made it to the end of this video, leave some kind of witchy, cozy emoji. It could be, you know, literally anything. A black cat, a bat, a pumpkin, a ghost, a candle, anything, whatever you want that seems like a cozy coveny kind of thing. <laughs> Leave that down in the comments down below to let me know that you made it to the end of this video and thank you so so much for watching I really appreciate it and I will see you all in my next video. Bye